1960, our year of independence, a wind of change was blowing through the country. The hoisting of Nigeria's new flag symbolized the end of colonial control and the promise of new beginnings, such as the transition from an agrarian economy to one driven by industry. But at independence, Nigeria had a low industrial development framework and the economy relied heavily on expatriates given the shortage of indigenous workers in possession of the skills required to catalyze the growth of industry and the economy at large. To end this dependency, the government set up the Industrial Training Fund ITF in 1971 with a mandate to raise an army of highly trained workers with the full complement of skills required for rapid industrialization and sustainable economic development. Today, in realization of this mandate, ITF is the foremost human resource development organization in Nigeria. Our 50-year journey is a story of human development and national transformation defined by professionalism, commitment, and fidelity to the founding mission. It is in reverence to this history, on this momentous occasion and milestone, that we celebrate our achievements and honor the administrators who steered the fund through the years, and the everyday staff whose dedication and commitment to the mission guarantee our legacy for generations to come. Transforming Nigeria into a highly productive nation requires an effective development strategy for the public and private sectors of the economy. To this end, we have recorded six notable achievements. The 70s were pivotal to manpower development in Nigeria. It was a decade ITF introduced the Implant Training and Apprentice Scheme after the Enterprise Promotion Decree of 1972, which had given rise to new industrial and commercial enterprises, implant training was used to standardize skills training in these emerging enterprises and to develop the technical and operational know-how of their workers. And this improved the efficiency of the manufacturing process. ITF contributed immensely in the growth and development of the manufacturing sector of NASCO Group of Companies. Today, NASCO Group is one of the major manufacturers in the north of Nigeria. Over the years, we have trained over 20,000 people in various skills, like manufacturing skills, uh, production skills, electrical skills, etc., etc. No? And we have no shortage of indigenous manpower to man and run our industries so this program has been very successful. Skills that are tailored towards industrial needs will ensure that the industrial aspirations in terms of policy and initiatives of any nation is achieved. Over the years, uh, they have perfected the process of synergizing with that sector. And this is exemplified in the fact that most successful industries in Nigeria are in one way or the other connected with ITF in terms of training their lead staff. This scheme remains one of ITF's most successful interventions for tackling the shortage of intermediate manpower in industries throughout Nigeria and it is a proven model for improving workforce productivity, efficiency and overall performance. A forerunner to implant training is the Students' Industrial Work Experience Scheme, CWES. Since inception, CWES has grown in popularity and scale. From only 11 participating institutions in 1974, it now draws about 300,000 students of engineering and allied technical courses yearly from 325 tertiary institutions nationwide. Similar to Germany's dual vocational training, DVT, CWES provides on-the-job 
hands-on experiences to young students. And while DVT's apprentice training explains why Germany has the lowest youth unemployment rate in Europe, CWE significantly improves students' prospects for employment after graduation. As a result, our industries are now more likely to hire better trained, technically competent workers than they did five decades ago. The effectiveness of in-plant training, CWES and similar training schemes is connected to the quality of training centers across the country. To this end, ITF has aided employers in standardizing their training centers and harmonizing their staff development programs. In addition, we also built industrial skills training centers in Ikeja, Kanu, Jos, Lokoja and Abuja where we have been strengthening and expanding the capabilities of various categories of industry workers across the country. You have the Industrial Revolution Plan. Within it, you have the Sugar Backward Integration Program. You have the Cotton Textiles and Garments, the Tomato Policy, uh, Cement Policy, and so on. Now, in all of these policies or subsectors that are mentioned, skills are key. The auto policy, for example, you need to have young people who are trained in mechatronics, in uh, automobile maintenance and so on. And ITF has set up in different parts of this country several workshops where uh, young people or trainees are trained in different aspects. So to that extent, I think ITF is doing a good job for the ministry. Historically, enrollment into technical and vocational institutions in Nigeria was low. This was further compounded by the existence of unaccredited, non-formal programs. Under these conditions, formal technical colleges were unable to generate the number of skilled workers required by the economy. Improving the profile and access to technical and vocational education and training, TVET, has been critical to reversing this trend. Technical vocational education and training is the main driver of industrialization globally. We need to work closely with ITF so that we can be able to mobilize you know, our young people, give them the relevant training under the NSQF. National Skills Qualification fr Framework, a six-level framework, and in each level, there are modules. You can decide to give certificate for one module of a certain level. So the short courses which ITF is offering can fit into those modules. And the good thing is the NOS, National Occupation Standards, of that NSQF is industry-driven. It's what the industries want. Our most notable intervention in this respect is the Model Skills Training Center, MSTC. Located in Abuja, MSTC is a world-class institute which was set up in collaboration with the Institute of Technical Educational Services, ITE, in Singapore. Through MSTC, we have upgraded the content of Tibet by exposing trainees to cutting-edge technologies like complex process automation, robotics, and innovative computing. We are thrilled that this investment has resulted in the assemblage of the first indigenous GSM smartphone in Nigeria, built wholly with locally sourced components. Some of the things that we thought about, that I thought about, that the management thought about, like the recent telephones, those are the things that needed to be done. Those are the things we thought about. It's not an issue of just developing training skills or manpower within industries. ITF should be a, is a resource center that companies can go to and say, give us ideas, what can we do? Technical and vocational colleges are very expensive to set up and run. Propagating Tibet, therefore, 
requires a blend of innovation and flexibility. We found this mix through our partnership with the National Service for Industrial Training, Senai, in Brazil. Through Senai, we procured three mobile units for skills training in air conditioning and refrigeration, industrial sewing, and instrumentation. These vans have not only saved us millions in development costs, they have facilitated the adoption of the Brazilian model where training is delivered to the doorstep of trainees who reside in remote locations. In 2009, ITF and NECA came up with a joint initiative called the Technical Skills Development Project TSDP to promote TVET and to ensure the availability of highly skilled technical manpower for the industrial sector and the economy. It was a masterclass on public-private partnership as an effective model for achieving shared objectives. The Technical Skills Development Project has its focus, which was initially to resolve the debt of skilled manpower in the factories. The second objective, which is also very fundamental, is the issue of employability. Most of the graduates from our technical schools and polytechnics, either two, they were not job ready. And I think for me is the most significant because by the time they pass through the technical skills development project, they are just apt for the job. This arrangement enables ITF improve its interactions with the organized private sector and develop programs according to their specifications, which are better able to meet their needs. What is, I think, uh, unique about them is that they have tended to grow with time. From the different phases of industrial development, they have continued to identify what skills are necessary for what technology. And I think they've been able to ensure that, to some reasonable extent, we have an avenue for upscaling the skill set that is required from uh, the workforce in the industrial sector. ITF also improved payments under its reimbursement scheme to eligible employers through an upgraded automation process which has improved the speed and transparency of training reimbursements. We've never added these goods. Beyond even the capacity that's been built, ITF is also faithful to the reimbursement of training grants, up to 50% of your training expenditure. This is also commendable. Without stress, without prompting, just follow the regulations. Once you train, you get your reimbursement. Only recently, over 6 billion Naira was disbursed to 510 employers nationwide. This has further energized employers of labor to conduct systematic capacity development of their indigenous workforce. To cater to the mass of unemployed youths, ITF developed several skills intervention programs in over 35 trade areas, which collectively equip over 500,000 young Nigerians annually with technical vocational skills. Recently, you know, there were adverts inviting people to come and sit for exams or be screened for training by the ITF in technical skills. And, you know, unlike in the past, when few people would come, but this time over a million people came. So you can see that the impact is being felt. People are now realizing that if you don't create a job for yourself, you may not get one. Why not create and then you are able to employ people to work for you? Our flagship program, the National Industrial Skills Development Program, NISDP, was conceived as a key enabler of the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan. Built inside its DNA is a sustainable design for job and wealth creation. The important thing for job creation is that people must have skills and uh, the ITF has done a lot in terms of training youth 
or in various industrial skills which have been useful for people who are setting up uh, industries all over the country. It is when you have a trained uh, workforce that uh, they are useful to people who want to set up these industries. And one of the things that we are trying to use as a ministry to uh, attract foreign investment into Nigeria is the fact that we have a skilled workforce available in Nigeria for these industries to uh, utilize for their businesses. Annually, NISDP trains over 200,000 Nigerian youths between the ages of 18 and 35 in diverse trade areas. Some of these are carried out in the vocational wings of ITF's area offices spread across 40 locations, while others are conducted in collaboration with master craftsmen in specialized centers nationwide. The very important thing about the ITF training is that they train, they certify, and they give a starter pack. So there is no excuse after undergoing an ITF training that a trainee that has come out with skills and certification will say he doesn't have the tools to start practicing the trade. The aftermath is that 70% of these trainees now earn livelihoods within the MSME sector, which in the last five years has contributed almost 50% to Nigeria's GDP and accounts for about 76% of the labor force. In 2018, ITA was named a star partner for MSME development by the Council for the Development of MSMEs in recognition of our contribution to the MSME sector. The following year, we received the award of excellence as an outstanding MSMEs clinic partner from the same council. You're here for the Women's Skills Empowerment Program, which is what's said. In the area of gender empowerment, the Women's Skills Empowerment Program, WOSEP, is a special intervention program which has empowered thousands of indigent women across the country. You know, women are faced with so many challenges. Widows are left to train their children where they are trained and have skills on their own, they can be able to stand and educate their children. So the impact ITF has created in the lives of women, young girls, young boys, is highly commendable. And I congratulate ITF for the good work they've been doing that has impacted and given hope to the hopeless. And I consider ITF a dependable ally to the Ministry of Women Affairs. Through WhatsApp, more women are now being knit into Nigeria's economic fabric and have been empowered to contribute to their families, communities, and the nation. 45 years ago, ITF relocated its head office from Lagos to Jos Plata State in the same year the state was created. The decision that was taken that ITF be relocated to Plateau was really for the good intention of the progress of that institution and also for the development of Nigeria. Incidentally, Plateau State is home to the Government Technical College Bukuru, one of the oldest technical colleges in the region. Founded in 1953, this college laid a solid foundation for technical skills to flourish in the state. Through the intervention of ITF, we are able to create what we call Plasmeda for the purpose of empowerment and, and uh, teaching and training people on skills. And uh, today we have over 100,000 of them. And you, if you add another 50,000 from ITF, it's more than 100,000 people. It's not an easy thing to say you have taken 100,000 people off the street. Just as it has done in Plata State, the fund has been involved in several social projects which are intended to complement the efforts of government at all levels to improve some of the living conditions of citizens across Nigeria. In North Central, many of the governors have come to me and said, this is what ITF is doing. Every governor talking about one thing or the other. This time, we are moving from white-collar jobs 
to skill acquisition. So that is the role of uh, ITF now. It's playing a very big role. And for us in Plateau State, we are gaining a lot. And uh, we will continue to work and capitalize on their presence here in Plateau State. In its early years, ITF conducted several groundbreaking surveys whose impact on the economy have endured to date. More recently, in conjunction with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, we undertook a skills gap survey assessment in six priority sectors of the Nigerian economy, which remains the most reliable data on skills gaps assessment in Nigeria. We also organized the first National Skills Summit, which brought stakeholders together to propose specific strategies for aligning skills development with labor market needs in order to bring lasting solutions to skills shortages and improve the employability of the nation's workforce. And part of the reason for this is to bridge this gap between what you have from the universities or other tertiary institutions and what the industry actually needs. One challenge we have in the economy is, is, is this signal gap between the skills available and the employment opportunity that exists, especially in industry. So this kind of intervention by ITF helps to narrow these gaps and helps to boost you know, the employability of labor and also help to improve the employment generation capacity of the Nigerian private sector. On this golden jubilee, we look back on our journey and are encouraged by the giant strides we have accomplished. Not only have we remained relevant to the pursuit of national economic development as the nation's leading training development organization, we are unmatched in experience, expertise, and in our expansive network. The next chapter of our journey will commence with the second phase of the ITF reviewed vision, building upon the remarkable achievements of the first phase. In the last 50 years, over 25 million Nigerians were trained by ITF, and to give them more support as we speak now, the Act is going through amendment by this National Assembly. It has passed the first and second reading. It is referred to the Committee for Further Legislative Action. And as soon as we reconvene, we are going to take the bill to the public to assess it and make some recommendations. We will conclude the establishment of at least one industrial skills training center in each of the six geopolitical zones and consolidate our internal capacity in the maritime as well as the oil and gas sectors, both of which present immense opportunities for training development. In the same fashion, we will close skills gaps along the agriculture value chain and the hospitality industry so that thousands more can be empowered to grow these sectors. These developments will be anchored on our mandate to set training standards and carry out appropriate certifications. So to all our stakeholders, partners and collaborators, we commit ourselves to a more beneficial relationship in the years ahead. To the ITF family, you are proof that Nigeria's greatest potential resides inside her people. And to all Nigerians, thank you for 50 extraordinary years.